Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad that although our God is so high and holy, he still loves us and chooses to call us friend. We bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness, beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of 
a great king. Welcome tonight to our APC live stream. This is an exciting time to be in the presence of the Lord with God's wonderful people. And I believe and trust that God's been blessing you in your homes and doing magnificent things among us during this time. So I'd love to give you an agenda for tonight's service. What I'm going to do is I will pray and ask God's blessing over what he has in store for us today. Our pastor will come to you and speak as the Lord has instructed him to direct us during this time through the word of the Lord. And after that, don't touch your computer because I'll be back to lead you and direct you in a time of giving, especially as this week is, amen, the week that we are ushering in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord. He gave his life for us, and the only thing that we could do is give and bless him. And so I'll be instructing you in a time of giving and updating you on this week's service as our service schedule has changed, and then our pastor will come back and close us off in a time of prayer. You know, during the whole service or during the whole time of uh, message, you can give to the Lord. And I want to give you some ways that you can give just to prepare you. Um, first of all, we can give by e-transfer through our desktop or through our mobile applications from our bank. We can do that at the email address donate at apcpickering.com. We can also give on our website at apcpickering.com backslash give, which also gives directions on all the ways that you can give. And you can give through our website by MasterCard or by Visa. We can also give by pre-authorized debit, where you can literally have your account debited every time you are paid so that it's easier for you to give your tithes and offerings through that means. We can also give by uh, check or by cash through the mail at the Apostolic Pentecostal Church of Pickering, 1920 Notion Road, Pickering, Ontario, L1V 2G3. Finally, you are welcome to come to the church and use our drop box located in the north wing of our lobby or using our debit and our credit uh, facilities through the hours of 9 a.m. through to 1 p.m. on a daily basis. Amen. At this time, I'm going to go before the Lord and ask the Lord's blessing on our live stream this evening and upon his word. Let's bow our heads and feel free to lift your hands and worship God as we pray. Father, thank you for this moment. Thank you for this time that we have to hear from you, to be instructed in the word of the Lord. Lord, we are so blessed that God, you've provided the means for us to disseminate the word, word of God, Lord, throughout the city of Pickering, throughout the region of Durham, throughout the greater Toronto area, throughout the province of Ontario, throughout Canada and our world. And so, Lord, we're praying for every hearer tonight that will hear the word of God. I ask you to open their ears, Lord, so that they're not dull of hearing. Open their hearts so that their hearts are plowed to hear what you have in store. And let their hearts be ready to receive the word of God. With, Lord, I pray great instruction and guidance. I'm praying for every person that will be listening to this broad, broadcast who is not saved. Oh God, hallelujah, would you touch the hearts of those that need salvation tonight. My God, minister to them. I pray you'd bring them to repentance. Oh God, I pray that Lord in their homes, hallelujah, let them be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues. And Lord, I pray, bring them to your house being baptized in Jesus' name. Lord, we're declaring your word today, Lord, throughout all of the nations. Let my God, every nation be blessed as the word of God goes forth. Anoint the man of God, his lips, his heart. Let him be an oracle, Lord, in this generation so that men and women would hear the words that come from your throne. Thank you tonight for what you are going to do, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless you. Welcome our pastor, Pastor A. Castro. Thank you, Brother Dean, and praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. This is church. Glad to be with you one more time in your homes, and 
Amen. I ask you just to consecrate this time, set it aside as a holy and sacred time where we meet together around the throne of God with an innumerable host of angels. Amen. Gather together uh, to hear the blood of Jesus speak better things to, to us than that of Abel's. Welcome. So glad you're with us, everybody. Amen. And all the people that I miss from church, I miss all of you so badly, and I'm sure many of you are having withdrawals and you are having different symptoms, but it's all right. Just take it easy. Amen. We'll get through this together. Amen. And I'm so delighted that you're allowing for me to be in your homes. Do, do, do me a couple of things. Number one, I want everyone online just to say a big amen. We want to know how many of you are there. Uh, d don't be silent. Don't, don't stay in the backgrounds. You, you say your amen. Send your comments. And also, I'd like for you to reach out to someone else to make sure they're joining us uh, this evening uh, for another installment of the precious word of the Lord. This is what's carrying us through Amen this time. I'm so glad though. I want to tell you this. I'm glad that APC as a church, we're not, we were not just a church on fluff and stuff and activity and event. We are exposing the people to the sound word of God as disciples whose faith is built on the rock and the shaking that's happening all around us. I'm so glad to know that the believers are holding steadfast. You're holding strong. You're still walking with God. You're still about the mission and purposes of God in your life. And God is able to keep us. So thank you for, amen, being faithful to the word of God and living as you've been taught. Tonight I want to bring you this very profound uh, thought, this word that uh, is a continuation from 1 Peter chapter number 1. But this evening we're going to read from verse 3 to verse 7. And I want to talk to you out of this word um, um, to bring you uh, some strength, to enable you to, to know that we're going to make it together. Amen. Before I, before I read, get your Bibles, turn it in your laps, sit down with 1 Peter chapter 1, gather your family. Amen. No coffee now. Just, just, just let's do the word of the Lord together. Amen. It's church. All right. So, so here it is. Um, I want to I just... Uh, make just give a couple quick testimonies here um got a text uh, this from the from the message this morning amen uh family calling ready to be baptized uh, multiple members of the family want to know when can we get baptized in jesus name this message got home to them this morning got another uh, profound uh, message uh, i want to read some of it to you it said this message the, this morning's message uh, during COVID-19 is a clear demonstration of the purpose of the church. For some, during the good times, it's hard to see the, the, why the church matters, hard to see the value of the church. Uh, keep leading people through this emotional and psychological challenge of, the strange of, the, of strange times with sound biblical doctrine. It is often said that people may forget what you say and even forget what you do, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. And uh, these are messages coming in. Thank you so much to our uh, members and viewers and those who have been blessed by the word of the Lord. We are so grateful to God for that. Allow me this evening to spend this time with you uh, again with the word of the Lord. First Peter chapter number one, back to the text we read this morning. But this time, verse number three, to the same people, the same scattered, the same uh, members or of the elect were called strangers in strange places. I want to bring you this evening a, a, a different thought, amen, but from the same text. Blessed be the God and Father for Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in the heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Pay attention to verse 6 and 7. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be. We greatly rejoice. We are, we are kept by the power of God unto salvation, the great end of the walk with God. We're going to be delivered. We're going to be called to meet the Lord. We're kept unto that wherein we rejoice greatly, we greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold, many kinds of rapid fire temptations, or the word is trials, or it's speaking of uh, putting you to the test, that the trial of your faith, 
being much more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried in the fire, might be found unto the praise and honor and the glory of God at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Now, this evening I want to talk to us from a thought um, that is drawn from verse number 6, and I'm going to spend the time in verse number 6 and 7. Um, but the thought is, I don't like it, but it's good for me. I don't like it, but it's good for us. Um, um, when, I, I, when I was a boy, I grew up with a, a large family. My mom and dad had eight of us, and uh, they lived together until, was married until they both passed away. Um, eight children. And one of, the, one of the annual traditions that was absolutely traumatizing, <laughs> Um, surprised I got through it, and we all got through it okay. But uh, at a particular season in every year, we would get some of the most uh, dreadful uh, laxative to drink. <laughs> As some of you can, can <laughs> some of you can relate to it. I tell you, I promise you, in those days. We weren't, we, weren't, we weren't laughing. We dreaded uh, waking up. We had nightmares the night before about what's going to happen. It's going to the slaughter. But the one thing they would say when we were getting these deathly tasting medicine, they would say, it's good for you. It tastes really bad, but it's good for you. And then what they would do after we were forced to drink it, thrown in our throat, our mouths were held closed and or nostrils squeezed together. We had to swallow that, 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 that very indescri indescribable, dreadful thing. When, when it went down and we could catch our breath, uh, they would put a little spoon of sugar in our mouth <laughs> just to kind of take the bad taste away. And, and, and I want to let you know, ladies and gentlemen, we're in a bad time right now, and my, my laughing is not really indicative of the way I feel about it, but by my own nostalgia, amen. But I say to you, we're in bad times right now, but, uh, but, uh, but, but sugar is coming. <laughs> amen, everybody. You may not feel that way right now because... Because some of you are still in the nightmare of how we navigate this. And some of you have this, this, this insipid taste in your mouth. And some of you have swallowed it and you feel like you want to gag. It's affecting you in all different kind of ways. Uh, and, and you may feel like, why, why are we going through this bitter times? It's, it's bitter and it tastes bad, Buckley says, but, but it works. And I want to let you know it's bad, but it's, 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 there's some good in it. Amen, everybody. And I don't like it, but it's, it's good for us. Uh, another thing that I think about is, I mean, as a, as a grown man, taxes. I don't like taxes. I don't like paying taxes. I don't know anyone that like uh, to see their paycheck plowed into and, and so much of your money is gone that you've worked for and, and it's, it's like you've been robbed before you, you got paid and all of that. But, but uh, you know what we like? We like good roads. We like street lights. We like hospitals that we'll, we can we'll drive into any time and we don't have to fork money out of our pockets. We like schools that are clean and education that is good. And we like all the hospitalization, the medical and all the social benefits uh, that comes from it. And so not everything that seems bad for us is bad for us. Not everything that seems to, to, to initially have negative impact has bad ending. you got to keep that in mind, ladies and gentlemen. Not everything that tastes bad and terrible is bad for us. So, 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 so are the trials we face. We're facing even now. They don't seem very good, and they're not, I'm not saying it's good, uh, but, but, but it may very well be good for us. So let's talk a little bit about about the word of the Lord. Believers are often tried by God. Believers are often tried by God. Not only are believers tried personally, congregations get tried also. Not only are congregations tried and families tried and individuals tried, but nations get tried also. And there are times when the whole earth, the entire globe, amen, seem to come under a divine uh, trial, amen. Uh, but why, why do we have these trials? Trials are good because they reveal the state 
of our faith and the genuineness of our faith. They tend to, re to reveal the, the strength we have. And they say you won't know what's in an orange until you put the squeeze on it. You won't know what the tea is made of until it's in the hot water. And sometimes God wants us to know what's in us and reveal who we are to us. And so what's most valuable to us, amen, it's not always what feels the best, amen. And so when we are in these trials, we are to check to see the genuineness of our faith. It is sometimes often to see what do we value the most, uh, when your investments are crashing and everything is seemingly going out of whack, what do you value the most? Uh, uh, what do you and where do you find strength from in the times when everything is falling apart? Any, any dead fish can, can, they say, float downstream. But it takes, it takes some living convictions. It takes some strength in your heart to, to, to go against the stream and go up, amen, and, and, and get to where your destinations are. And so uh, when trials come, it comes to test the genuineness of our faith. Uh, the values that we value, systems that we profess, that we own and, and, and believe in, and it, it tests our strength. Where do we find strength? And it goes even deeper to our worship. Amen. Is our worship, amen, dry weather worship, good weather, fair weather worship, or can we worship through the fire and the trials and the test of life? And so, amen, he tries us not only with these difficult times, but God has a way of trying us with prosperity. Now, in the times of prosperity, the believers, amen, we, we love that. We, we love ease and we love prosperity. And all of us, we enjoy that. But it, it, it's not always good for us. You know, uh, candies and candies and more candies. It's, it's not always good for us. It feels good. It tastes good. But it's not always good for us. Uh, broccoli is good sometime. And, and, and some of that, 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 that Scott's emulsion, that bitter bad tasting stuff and, and, and buckles sometimes. And, and so, so we've got to understand that in times of prosperity, very often our faith goes to ease and we don't think we need God as much as we, we really need him until God begins to shake things up. And then all of a sudden we realize my poor life was in shambles. My faith was really weakening in God and I was relying so much on things and not necessarily trusting the Lord. And so God will use prosperity to try us and to reveal, amen, how much we we, we, we value him, amen, but at times when prosperity lullabies us to bed, God will use adversity, amen, fiery trials to try us. And so 1 Peter 1 tells us in verse, verse number 6 and 7, amen, God, we, we greatly rejoice in the hope we have in the coming of the Lord, but, but, there, but, but if need be, we, we have seasons of heaviness. Amen. And these seasons of heaviness, emotional, psychological, spiritual, physical heaviness come upon us because of the trial, the many kinds of trials we're facing. And I want to let you know that manifold trial is not just one trial. Manifold trial means a whole barrage of trial. It's, it's like Job's day, you know. One day made all the difference. He had everything going. Prosperity was going well. Family was going well. E economics was going well. Health was going well. Relationship was going well. But then came the bad news. Oh, Job, your sons were over here. Job, your animals were over. Everything in one day, one day, it was a rapid fire, manifold trials, amen, that came upon Job. But I'm so glad that Job did not fail in that. He still remembered the Lord and say the Lord gave, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so when we're facing these manifold trials, it comes to reveal exactly who and what we have in us. Peter describes it like the trying of gold in the fire, amen. Amen. And so when we speak of this, uh, heaviness is a result of trial, sadness, emotional depressing feelings, feelings of anxiety, amen, can come weighing very heavily upon us. As a matter of fact, the Bible describes heaviness even as a spirit, a spirit of heaviness that can come upon the believers, amen. And heaviness, we don't like it. Temptations and trials, tests, we don't like it. Going through the fire, we don't like it. But the Bible says in verse number 6 of 1 Peter 1, amen, it is upon us as needed. It is upon us, if need be, we are in these trials. Now, Peter wrote that not to say it may be necessary. He's, he's writing to say, as needed, it is added to us. Trials are added to us as needed by God. In other words, then, it is a part 
of the Christian experience. Make, make a note of that. Tribulation worketh patience. Patience, experience, experience, hope, and hope makes not a shame. We want hope and we want uh, experience, but we don't want tribulation. It's a part of it. Suffering, trials, heaviness, amen, manifold tests. It is a part of the Christian experience. Amen, everybody. Manifold trials uh, will come to us not just because we are bad, amen, but God is sending it to us for our perfection. The elect in Zion have seasons of mourning. Even the very elect, according to Isaiah 61, which I, you don't return there, but you can read it when you, when you get a chance. Even the very elect in Zion, they mourn and they cry and they have spirits of heaviness upon them. And God has to show up to say, you know what, let me give you the, 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 the oil of joy and take away the spirit of heaviness and give you the garment of praise. The point I'm making is this, it doesn't matter how good you're living, even in Zion there can be mourning and difficult trials and tests that comes upon us. And so the elect, hear me now, the elect are not elected by God to be, to be, to be spoiled. They are elect by God, amen, to be secured and to, to a place where they come to maturity. The elect, amen, are not elected by God to be kept in a bubble. They are elect of God even to fight battles. The elect are not, amen, immune to suffering. They are not immune to sorrow. They will be depressed. There will be depressing times and depressing seasons and trying times and sad times and manifold trials. But I want to ask you, did not Job come out better than he got in? Ladies and gentlemen, I want to let you know God has a way of giving you a double for your trouble. And so it may seem like weeping or in, may, may be overwhelming you now, but don't ever forget, weeping is only for a night, but joy come on now is coming in the morning and I want to prophesy to someone that this too shall pass it's a test but it didn't come to stay it came to pass ladies and gentlemen we know what suffering is designed by God trying times sad times there are times that are not enjoyable we don't enjoy them we don't delight in them but they are necessary amen the medicine doesn't taste good but it's necessary and I want to let you know this it's not only necessary it's wisely designed by God amen when my mom was making sure I drink that that terrible uh, medicine amen she didn't overdose me it was just the right amount amen to accomplish the right end and God says amen I put I, I put boundaries to the sea and say this far no further God's got Leviathan under control. God's got behemoth under control. And I want you to understand that whatever may be going on in your life, on top of the crisis in this world, God has control of it all and it can turn out for your good. Amen. They are not always enjoyable when you're going through it. Amen. But they are necessary and wisely designed by God to accomplish his good end. Why? For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. So don't allow yourself to become, amen, disenchanted. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, amen, you may have lost a loved one. You may have been rejected by a lover. Amen. Going through a bit of divorce right now. You may have been laid off after you've upgraded your house, your car, and now you can't afford to pay. You may have been going through a time of rejection by friends and loved ones. You may be going through isolation and don't know how to handle it. But I want to let you know, even if you've been diagnosed with a disease right now, amen, even if you've been qualified for a promotion and been picked over, I don't know. It could be a litany of things that uh, may be seem, seeming as trying times right now right now. You don't, have to, you don't have the money to pay your rent and the bills are due. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to hear me on this. Not because we are Christians. We are not tax exempt. We are in it for profit. We are not tax exempt. God has chosen us, amen, for such a time. And we need to understand this. I don't like what's happening. But if God says it's necessary, then I'm going to look to the Lord. And remember this, ladies and gentlemen, that some seasons in life are very trying and very dark. That when you look up, you can't even see the sun, S-U-N. But I want to let you know, it doesn't matter how dark it is. I want to see the S-O-N of God because he is my light and my salvation. And he will carry me through the difficult times. 
times. Paul said, I know what difficult times are. In first, second Corinthians chapter number one, verse number eight, Paul wrote of a time, he said, brethren, amen, I don't want to be ignorant of our trouble. Everyone say trouble. Write it down. Christians have trouble. Paul had trouble. Amen. Apostles had trouble. The holy people had trouble. It's not just something for the bad people. God designs what he designs. Amen. For his own sovereign purpose and ends. And Paul said, I don't want to be ignorant of our trouble. Don't ever get the notion that because you are a Christian, you are tax exempt and trouble exempt and sickness exempt and problem. No, no, no. We are a people. If anybody knows how to handle trouble, we should be the ones that knows how to handle know how to handle trouble. So Paul said, don't be ignorant of our trouble, which came upon us in Asia. His trouble was so intense. He said, we were pressed out of measure. I mean, he was busting. He was splitting at the side. It's like you're stepping on a balloon and, and watch it squish right out. He was pressed out of measure above strength in so much that he said we were despaired even of life. He almost got suicidal. The spirit of heaviness came upon him. And you say, but that's a waste. That, that, that's not good. That, that's a bad thing. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to let you know this. Paul spoke of extensive depressive circumstances. And I'm saying all of this to let you know that if you are going through a hard time, do not allow yourself to complicate that and wonder, why am I? You are not tax exempt. It may be good for you. Oh, I promise you. I promise you this is not the end. Just hang on with God. Hang out with God. Stay in prayer meeting. Stay in the prayer room. Stay in the Word and wait upon the Lord. After a while, amen, God has a way of giving you joy, amen, for sorrow. Yes, brothers and sisters, amen, you may go, be going through a difficult time now, very, very difficult time, but after a while, uh, that also will pass brothers and sisters the apostle paul had very depressive circumstances but god had reasons for see has reasons for seasons god has reasons for seasons you may not like the rain but the trees will like it you may not like the sun but i promise you the builders will like it the fruits will grow sweeter. <laughs> that good? Amen. You men like how, 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 how hard things are, but God is working it out. And he allows the sun to shine upon the just and on the unjust. Uh, unjust. Listen to what Paul said now. We are troubled on every side. Telling you, you may not like it, but it's good for you. It, you may not see it now, but follow on. We are troubled on every side, but we're not distressed, perplexed, but we're not in despair, persecuted, but we're not forsaken, cast down, but we're not destroyed. Paul is simply saying, I know what hard times are. Look at verse number 16 in the same chapter, and we see what kept Paul. Paul said, for this cause we faint not, though the outward man perish, but the inward man is being renewed day by day. So some things, the value of some trial is not for the benefit of the body, it's for the benefit of the soul. It's not for the benefit of the body, but for the benefit of the soul. It makes you weep in prayer like you've never wept before. You see, the problem with, with, with many of us is we have forgotten how to pray. We have forgotten how to cry out before God. I'm not saying we don't pray, but we go through these in the times of ease. We get up in the morning, thank you Lord for waking me up, bless my meal in Jesus' name, amen. But we don't know what intercession is anymore. Or we've forgotten how to lay down and prostrate and bawl and lament and how. And I know people are saying, but why do you have to do that? Do you think God is God? God no, God isn't indifferent, but God is not, not fearful about us praying either. He wants us to cry out to him. Paul says, for this cause we faint not, though the outward man perish, the inward man is renewed day by day. Verse number 17, he said, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Here it is now. It may not seem good, but it's going to work for good after a while. Here it is. Our light affliction is not eternal. Our light affliction, it is for a moment. Notice Peter said, if you be in heaviness for a season. Now Paul is turning it around and said, even what you call heaviness is a light affliction. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say this. Amen. Don't make your problem bigger than your God. Don't make your problem bigger than your God. What you're magnifying as Goliath can be brought down by a little David and a little stone. That's the God we serve. Somebody give him a praise. Hallelujah. It's a light affliction. 
COVID-19 is a serious disease, a serious plague, but God is bigger than it all, and God can arrest it and turn it around, and God can save your soul from sin. By his blood, he can also change your diseases and heal your body. He's that kind of God, and he can make you have such faith in him that you can look upon all you're going through and say, I don't like it, but it's good for me because it's making me pray like I've never prayed before. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, it works for us. Everybody says it's working for me. I don't know how I'm going to come out of this, and I don't know how you're going to come out of this, but I know this. It's good. You're going to come out of this with something working for you, an exceeding eternal weight of glory. Amen. While we look not on the things which are seen, but on the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen. And that's what trials do. They have a way of making you not look at the temporal things, but look at the eternal things. Ladies and gentlemen, the lesson we must learn is that God does not waste trials. God does not waste trials. God, if he chastens, it's for profit. If God corrects, it's for great result. And so, he doesn't do it for pleasure because he delights in your pain, but he does it for corrective measures, for health, and for your benefit. So that when you get down the road, you have a, a smooth road to drive upon. The taxes you pay in your trial will provide you, amen, the benefits you need down the road. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When God allows, amen, the elect to suffer trial, I won't, it won't last forever. It's needed, but this too shall pass. So I want you to notice Peter said it. While we keep, we're going to go to this text in the book of Isaiah. But before I turn there, Peter said it. Amen. These, these are light of, or, uh, trials which are but for a moment. He said, if need be, you are in heaviness for a season. Now, if need be. So it's not something that's going to last forever. It's a now thing. In other words, he is building value in you right now while you're going through your trials. He is building, amen, faith in you while you're going through your trials. You are, we're not a victim of circumstance. God's got this under his control. And we as a nation and a body of believers are under divine renovation. As a people, we are under divine renovation. We're in, of course, the church can still greatly rejoice, though now for a season. Though now for a season. That's exactly what it means. Now does not mean it for, for, for forever. It's for a short time. And if, for, if we are in a season, if need be, God's got that season under his control. He puts us through manifold tests. Isaiah said 28, 21 to 29. A lengthy read, but I want us all to turn there in our homes. Amen. He puts us through these manifold tests, but it, whether it be at poverty or prosperity, be it pain or pleasure, whatever he does, isolations or plagues, whatever means God uses, he uses it to achieve an excellent end. Oh, God is never confused about how things are going to work out. He is busy working it to ensure that his ends are going to be achieved. Here's a profound scripture that spoke to me very clearly yesterday. The Bible says in Isaiah 28, from 21 to 29, for the Lord shall raise up as in Mount Perizim, he shall be wroth or angry as in the valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work, his strange work, and bring to pass his act, his strange act. God can be strange. That's what I preach about this morning. God can do some strange works and some strange acts. And this COVID-19 is a strange thing. That's why it's called the novel COVID virus or the novel coronavirus. It's a strange thing. The doctors don't know what to do with it. They don't know how to handle it. It's a new thing. It's a strange thing. But God says, when I am bothered, I will do strange things. Hallelujah. And I want to say to our nations, we've got to be careful because we've called some things 
good that are evil and we have made some things that are evil good and when we when our when the when the cup of our iniquity is full sometimes it pushes God to do strange things and we've got to take some medicine oh we don't like the trials we don't like the medicine but I want to let you know this ladies and gentlemen it may taste bad but it's going to work for good so now therefore because God is doing strange things check your attitudes now therefore be not mockers lest your bands be made strong no a lot of folks are making light of this COVID-19 like oh well it's only that it's only it's, it's no big deal you hear me folks it's bigger than you think it is if the governments are shutting down cities and shutting down economies and mm, entertainments are shutting down and sports teams are shutting down this is not something light don't make mockery of it by just acting like, oh well, they just want to keep me in my home. Maybe they want to keep you in your home because God has designed it a strange thing so that you can fall on your face and begin to repent of your sins and turn to the Lord and say, God, I've been mocking you with my lifestyle for a long time. I've been drinking and do smoking and running around and doing what I want, but this is to bring us to repentance and you've got to be careful, ladies and gentlemen. Nations, I want to say this to us, be very careful how you treat God in this crisis time. It's time for national leaders to call for nations in prayer don't make mockery of this now don't make mockery of this you read the book of Revelation and the Bible will tell you over and over when the plagues are being poured out that the people did not repent be careful of an implacable heart a rationalizing existential heart an atheistic heart that says oh well it's no, since the fathers fell asleep all things no this is bigger than nature God is doing a job and he's saying don't make mockery of it now lest your bands be made stronger for I have heard from the Lord, said Isaiah, the Lord of hosts, consumption even determined upon the people. God saying, I'm going to bring a strong and mighty disease upon the people. Strong, complete, amen, a pouring of my trial upon the people. So give ear and hear my voice. Hearken to and hear my speech. I'm pleading with you, ladies and gentlemen, as Isaiah the prophet pled with his people. He said, listen to what God says now. Does the plowman plow all day to sow? Of course he does. Does he, does he open, the, uh, open and break the clods of the ground? Of course he does. When he hath made plain the face thereof, uh, doth he not cast in, amen, abroad the fitches and scatter cumin and cast in principal wheat and appointed barley and the rye? And the, when God, in other words, when he's saying, when I plow the ground, I don't plow it for nothing. I plow it, I break up the fallow. I remove the stones, I make sure the earth is smooth, and then I begin to put seed in the plowed ground. Oh, catch this. For God hath instructed him to discretion and doth teach him, the, the farmer. For the fitches are not threshed with a threshing instrument. Please, this is so powerful to me. I may just want to back it up a little bit because I want to get this. In verse 26, he said, I just don't do things but I give discretion to the farmer to make sure the farmer plows the ground properly, break up the clods properly, and then sow the seeds properly. Can I tell you something, ladies and gentlemen? This may seem like a strange thing to you, but what I'm telling you is this. God is plowing our grounds. God is plowing our hardened grounds. Things that seem as though we were so cool and everything is secure. The earth was set as the security of men. But God saying, I'm plowing it up. I'm tearing up some things. I'm breaking up some things that you've been relying on. But I'm not doing for your destruction. He said, I'm tearing it up and I'm refining the ground because I'm getting ready to put some seeds in that ground. I'm going to plant some wonderful things in that ground. Can I ask you, does the farmer plant just to plant for, for no reason? Absolutely not. The farmer plants and breaks the ground and puts a seed in because harvest is coming. And I will let you know this, ladies and gentlemen, I may not like the plowing that's going on, but it's needed for the harvest that's coming. Somebody to give God a praise on that right now. You may not like what you're going through, but oh, the end of it is going to be great and wonderful. Yes, sir, there's a harvest coming after the plowing. There's a harvest. I'm prophesying to you, ladies and gentlemen. Don't make mockery of this because you may delay your harvest and your wonderful results. God said, I instruct the farmer with discretion and teach him. Verse number 28 and 27 says, Amen. The fitches on a thresh with a threshing floor, threshing instrument. Catch this. Neither the cart wheel, amen, run over the cumin, but the fitches are beaten up with a staff and the cumin with a rod. In other words, God is saying this. 
I will use the right instruments at the right time to get the right result. Bread corn is bruised because he will not ever, it will not ever be threshed, amen. Bread corn is bruised because he will not ever be threshing it, nor break it with the wheels of the cart, nor bruise it with the, ho with the horsemen. In other words, I'm not just going to let the enemy run rough shot over you. This also comes from the Lord of hosts, which uh, is wonderful in counsel and excellent in his working. I want to let you know, ladies and gentlemen, this is a, a long scripture I've read, but it's, it's, a, it's a telling and picturesque scripture showing that the farmer is not indiscretionate with his work. He plows the ground, he plants the seed in the right places, and then when it's harvest time, he reaps properly, and then he uses the right instrument to break the right th uh, 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 thing out of its husk and shell. And God said, I'm not just going to allow wheels to run awry and run amok. Oh, brothers and sisters, the devil isn't running this world. This world isn't out of control. God's got it all under his control. The plowing is of God. Amen. And when God is moving in the land, we ought to realize that we should not make mockery of it. He never plows with the wrong instruments. He never breaks the ground with the wrong instrument. He never sows the wrong seeds. He never reaps the wrong harvest. He never uses the wrong tools. And if God is using COVID-19 to get men to pray, I want to let you know, I don't like it but it may be necessary I don't like it but it may be necessary but I want to tell you this brothers and sisters I the many things I don't like but it may be necessary many things you don't like but it may be necessary I don't like getting a spanking when I was a boy but it was necessary because I had a bad nasty mouth a bad temper bad attitude and it was necessary and God had to drive it out of me I'm not saying it was nice no I didn't like it but it was necessary and many of you can attest to that. And I guarantee you, ladies and gentlemen, you may not like the politics right now, but God's got it all in control, right instrument at the right time. He's not going to use the wrong instrument to thresh out the, raw, the wrong harvest grain. No, he does not use wheels and cumin to break, the, break up the grain. He uses a rod and he uses a stick to get that out. And I want to let you know this, the right president is in the office. You may not like it, but God knows who he wants in the right place at the right time. The right prime minister is in, the, is in office. The right premier is in office. The right medical staff are in office. The right people are in office. Amen. The right people are in the right places right now because God is working all things after the counsel of his will. And the farmer is not destroying the field. He is getting it ready for harvest. Would somebody give God a praise? The farmer is not destroying the ground. He's plowing it to get ready to sow in it. And he's sowing it to get ready for a mighty harvest and I know out of this something amazing is going to come out of it. People are calling already. I want to get baptized. I want to turn my life to the Lord. Something is going to shake the foundation of the world and make men understand that this is not meant for evil. It is for good. Brothers and sisters, I'm not calling it something wonderful by no means, but Peter uses a, an analogy to show us the good of it. He said your faith is going to be tried Amen. Like, like gold is tried in the fire. He said it was needful. It's needed. If, if, if need be, now you are in trial. And I'm letting you know it's needed. I believe God is doing something to get a good end out of it. Amen. Peter tells us what God is really up to. He's trying us with fiery trials. Putting our faith on trial. Putting our faith to the test. Because it's needed to bring out. Ha, here is it now. It's needed to bring out the praise out of you like you've never praised before. It's needed to bring the profit out of you like never before. It's needed to bring the power of God out of you like never before. It's needed to make you see how precious you are in the very eyes of God. Peter used the analogy of the purifying of gold. And when the prospector, amen, of gold goes to the go to dig and mine gold, amen, they would find the gold and they would dig it out of the dirt, out of the ground. And when they would dig the gold out of the earth, the gold would be mixed with dirt and alloy and it was not all the particles of the earth were still mixed in with the gold. It was not pure. It was gold, but it was not at its best quality. It was gold, but it was not in its best value. And I want to let you know this. Your trial may be hot, but oh, it's needed to bring the best value out of you. What kind of Christian do you want to be? It is said that if you want to be tin, tin is made at 150 degrees. Brass, 500 degrees. Silver, 
1150 degrees, but if you want to be cold, pure gold, it starts at 1400 degrees. And I want to let you know when God wants to make the best of you, He put you through the test. When God wants to make the best, it's got to go through the test. You wouldn't even drive a car without them putting it through the rigors and the test it goes through to make sure it is safe and can take a, lick, a, a, a good hit and protect you and your family in it. God is making sure we come out of this real wonderful when God wants to make you the best when God wants to purify you when God want to make you precious when God want to make you powerful when God want to give you a platform to testify with brokenness and humility and conviction when God want to give you a special anointing God's going to put you through the fiery trial of the furnace like gold is tried gold is not just dug out of the ground and made to great value gold for it to be its best had to be put through the fire and I don't like the fire but ah it's necessary I don't like the trial but oh it's necessary I don't like the pain, but oh, it's necessary. I don't like the medicine, but oh, it's necessary. I don't like the taxes, but oh, it's necessary. I don't like being at home, but it's necessary. I don't know how it's going to all turn out, but I know it's necessary. God is doing something powerful. The gold in the fire was not just because the smelter hated the gold. He wanted value out of the gold. God has some value inside of you. Some of you are so anointed, so gifted. You've got so many talents that you've never consecrated to God. And God says, slow down now. You're going to write songs for me. Slow down now. You're going to get back in intercession. Slow down now. You're going to write, uh, uh, start your book. Slow down now. You're going to begin to connect with the, with the poor and the needy. Because I'm going to bring out of you what you didn't know was inside of you. Men look upon you now. And all this is a rough you. But oh, the fire has a purifying you. And get the rough stuff out of you. And make something beautiful and something good out of your life. I don't like it, but it's necessary. The gold, the smelter would take the gold and take that gold to the fire and put that gold in the heat of the fire until the gold begins to melt. Peter says, Peter says, the trying of your faith is more precious than gold. It's better than gold. It's better than the things you put your trust in. Your faith in this COVID-19 is better than your money. Money is losing value while faith is going up in stock. Praise be to God. The Bible says the trying of your faith is much more precious than gold that is tried in the fire. Amen. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, when, the, when the, they would take the gold and put it in the fire, they would heat it up to 1,400 degrees, then the gold would melt. And then the smelter would take a long pole with a, with a ladle on the top bottom. He would scoop off all the alloy and all the scum and all the dross and all the dirt that the fire, see? The fire would melt the gold <laughs> and reveal some things that were trapped in the gold that nobody sees. Oh, the fire has to bring out some things, a purification that, 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 that you never, you didn't know how dirty you are, how unclean you are, angry and hateful and carnal you were. But oh, the fire has a way of bringing out the carnality and the Bible said the, 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 the smelter would take off the, the scum and the muck off the, the, the gold and they'd put it back in the fire and the gold would melt again and they would skim it again and go through the process over and over and over. Ladies and gentlemen once that is done there is a change. There's a change that transforms everything. There's a change that transforms everything. We need to understand this. That this change is necessary. This change is necessary. The Bible makes us to understand this. That a trying of your faith is more precious. More precious than gold. The smelter would continue to work on that gold. Until there was no more scum rising. No more dirt rising. And when that gold was absolutely purified. The smelter would stand over that gold. And know that the gold was pure. When he could see his reflection. In the gold. And I want to let you know there's a trying of your faith. Maybe hurtful, but it's necessary. I don't like the fire, but if it's going to make me more like Jesus, then it's necessary. I don't like being in the fire, but if it's going to make me love like Jesus loved, walk like Jesus walked, pray like Jesus prayed, then it is absolutely necessary. David said, before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I kept thy word. Affliction and trial has a way of bringing us back to the place we ought to be. And so, ladies and gentlemen, whatever you're going through today, I want to assure you that your weeping is for night, but joy is coming in the morning. Job tells us something absolutely profound. In Job 23, 
8 to 10, Job tells us about the wonderful seeking of the Lord when he gets before the presence of the Lord. He said, Behold, I go forward and there is not, he's not there. Backwards and couldn't find him, couldn't perceive him there. Then Job went further. He said, I mean, I, I, begin, to, I begin to go to the left and couldn't find him. And I couldn't, I go to the place where I work and I couldn't find him. But then he said, he hid himself from me that I could not see him. But then here comes something very powerful. But the Bible said, he knows the way that I take. And when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. I shall come forth as pure gold. Ladies and gentlemen, so what do we do? Bible tells us in 1 Peter 4 and 12 to 13. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of the suffering of Christ. Knowing that when his glory shall be revealed, we're going to be partakers of it. Can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the greatest suffering is not what you're going to go through. Or not what you're going through right now. But suffering is needed so that we can have the greater glory of God in our lives. Jesus did not like the cross either. He cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? If it's possible, take this cup from me. But the cross was necessary so that I could be made a child of God. And that's why we tell you today, you may not like the suffering, but it's necessary. Please stay tuned. Our announcer is going to give you some announcements, and then we're going to wrap this up tonight. What a word that we've heard from the Lord tonight to bless us, to challenge us. And I believe this is the greatest time, the greatest moment, the greatest show of faith that we can give to the Lord and bless the Lord as our act of worship, as the Lord has increased us in our wealth during this time. I'd like to give you the instructions that are necessary at this time to give and the ways that you can give. Number one, you can do it by e-transfer. Um, through your desktop or your mobile app, and we'd like you to go there right now in this moment as we're going to spend this time in a time of giving. You can send your e-transfer to donate at apcpickering.com. You can also give on our website at apcpickering.com backslash give, where you can give by MasterCard, or you can give by Visa. You can also give by pre-authorized debit as well where you can um, have APC um, uh, to, to debit your account on a frequent basis. Also, we can give by check or by cash in the mail to Apostolic Pentecostal Church of Pickering, 1920 Notion Road, Pickering, Ontario, L1V 2G3. And also, you can bring your cash um, or your debit or credit offerings to the church um, at our Dropbox, which is located in our lobby in the North Wing, where you could use our debit and credit facilities that are here. The hours that that is available is from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. throughout the week. Amen. So at this time, we want you to join us in a time of giving. And if uh, you need any further information, please click on the links below in the description in our YouTube channel at this moment. While you're taking the moment to give to the Lord, I want to give you a few updates and a few announcements that are important for the week. Number one, our Easter schedule. This week, uh, we'll be having service on Good Friday at 11 a.m. And we'll be having service on Easter Sunday at 11 a.m. as well as at 6.30 p.m. Join us for an amazing time this week as we see um, the Lord bless us and our theme is love on display. Now, in the evening at 6.30 p.m., we're actually going to have a drama which is entitled When He Rose. you got to make sure you tune in for that. It's going to be an amazing time in the house of the Lord. Moving forward, we want to remind you of our prayer schedule where every single day from Monday to Saturday, you can join us in prayer from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. and from 8 a.m. Uh, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Feel free to join us at any time during that time for prayer. And finally, you can see all of our service schedule, whether it's via our website um, at apcpickering.com. We've got Bible study this Wednesday at 7 p.m. on YouTube, on Facebook, or you can follow, or you can see us at apcpickering.com. Amen. We want to make sure you're aware of that, that form in the schedule. Also, 
Uh, you can find out information about um, our reading of the week, which will be in the book of 2 Peter chapter number 3 and 1 John chapter number 1 to chapter number 5. And don't forget to follow us, to like us and to subscribe on YouTube, on Facebook, and on Instagram as well. Amen. May God richly bless you. Amen. Our pastor is going to come and he's going to lead us in a time of prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for staying with us today, this evening. And we certainly hope you are blessed by the word of the Lord. Uh, the medicine is not always good to the taste, but it's good for health. And we're going to get through this time better than we got in. We're going to get through knowing how to pray, walk in humility, serving our neighbors, loving our children, spending time with our spouses. We're going to get out better. Please don't make mockery of Jesus Christ today in the middle of all of this. So I want to pray with you. And if you need salvation, it's a great time to turn your lives around. Would you bow your heads with me right where you are in your homes? And would you open your heart and say, Jesus, I need you. Send me a net message to let me know that you're going to turn your lives around and you want to take on his name and you want to walk with him. You can receive the Holy Ghost right now in your room as we pray. Bow your heads with me. Father, we thank you for the word gone forth. We believe that it will not return void. I praise you for leading us, leading our nation, leading our countries, leading us, my God, in the paths of righteousness. And I pray now that as we walk through this strange time, that we would recognize that you are excellent in counsel and you're working all things after the counsel of your will. I pray that multitudes come to know you now. Let love cover a multitude of faults and may nations and families be strengthened. I give you praise for salvation and a mighty harvest. In Jesus' name, we command a blessing upon your people and everyone say amen. God bless you ladies and gentlemen. Take care of yourselves. Enjoy your evening and we look to see you as soon as this is over. God bless you.